All right. Greetings, everybody. Thank you for coming to the conference today. Currently, we have Amy Lee joining us. She is going to talk about the importance of an accessibility design checklist. All right, Amy Lee is an IAAP CPWA certified accessibility subject matter expert who is highly motivated to help make digital content that is accessible to all users. She has provided end-to-end -end product lifecycle consulting services to help organizations make their products accessible, including, but not limited to, websites, mobile applications, and software. Prior to entering the accessibility space, Amy taught graphic design and web development to underserved and underrepresented youth nonprofit organizations. She speaks three Chinese dialects and in her free time, she likes to collect vinyl records and follow acrylic painting tutorials. And now she is going to paint a picture of what a good accessibility design checklist looks like. All right, I'm gonna turn off my camera and give you the stage. We will have a little bit of time for Q&A at the end, uh, so I'll be looking through those at the end for a discussion. Thanks, Randy. Thanks for the introduction. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> uh, thank you for joining this presentation on the importance of an accessible checklist. My name is Amy Lee. I am an accessibility subject matter expert at VMware. Um, so, the basic agenda for this uh, presentation will be um, just a brief explanation of what digital accessibility is, uh, why we at VMware decided to have a design checklist for designers, um, what's included in the checklist, what's not inclu included in the checklist, um, and how it benefits a uh, company as a whole and, and the end product. <clears throat> so what, what is accessibility? Um, so on the screen here, I have a basic um, definition. Uh, basically, digital accessibility refers to the design and development of digital content, tools, technologies for easy access for people with diverse abilities and disabilities. So, uh, digital con so when we say um, digital content, we, we basically mean anything that you can access um, on mobile on, on any digital device. So P we're talking about PDFs websites, uh, uh, apps on your mobile devices, uh, desktop applications, um, to basically any type of software. <clears throat> and accessibility affects all parts of the company. I can't stress this enough whenever I talk to different people um, from different uh, departments and organizations. Uh, uh, on the screen here, I have a Venn diagram uh, where accessibility is in the middle and have inclusion, compliance, business, and usability around accessibility. <clears throat> and for the inclusion piece, um, that's usually the most um, obvious part of accessibility. Uh, you want to cultivate an inclusive uh, environment for your employees as well as uh, to your customers. So. Uh, ways of doing that is to ensure that all or your internal and external products are uh, accessible. Um, uh, for the compliance piece, uh, of course, um, meeting just as the, uh, the guidelines and standards um, provided by uh, your government will, will help prevent uh, litigation um, when it comes to uh, providing uh, services and products you have. Um, and of course, in turn, that, that helps drive more business, right? Um, you don't want to uh, lose sales due to a lack of uh, compliance. Um, and last but not least, like the biggest part would be usability. So you, you want not only for your product to be accessible, but you also want it to be uh, highly usable. And oftentimes um, for designers, you, you'll realize that uh, if you make your product accessible, it will likely be even more usable to those without disabilities. <clears throat> and so one thing I also like to talk about are kind of three separate concepts that are related to practicing inclusive design within uh, your products. Um, so um, these inclusive design, accessibility, and disability 
are related, but I often like to make sure that it's understood that these are different things. Um, so inquisitive design is the practice of the process of making your process, products accessible to people with usabilities. So it happens bottom here in the sentence. Um, inquisitive design is the process of making products accessible to allow as many people as possible to use them, including those disabilities. So that's the sentence I usually like to use to kind of describe those three concepts. Um, so just to give people an idea of what those mean. Um, and this brings up to the design checklist. So why, why did VMware have um, a checklist for designers? So uh, of course, the obvious, obvious um, thing is it's the right thing to do, right? To help as many people as possible um, to feel included and, and be able to use your product. Um, but beyond that, at VMware, uh, we you know embarked on a journey to improve accessibility within our products so it could be used by the greatest amount of people as possible. Uh, and part of this effort, uh, all VMware products must meet uh, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, uh, WCAG for short. Sometimes you might hear WCAG um, pronounced. Um, and we follow 2.1 level A and double A standards. Um, and this is very common if your products are uh, used and sold internationally. And, and this also includes our internal products as well that our empl employees use. <clears throat> and you know, a part of that, you know, making our products more accessible, there's a lot, we do a lot of training internally. We talk to different groups uh, of, of users within our company and, and also within our customers. We want to make sure that our designers and developers know uh, how to make products uh, as, as accessible as possible. <clears throat> so, so there were some some issues we I want to highlight that that we wanted to solve when considering this, um, creating a design checklist. Uh, first one was VMware was relatively new to accessibility, um, and a lot of designers uh, were not considering um, accessibility in the design process. Uh, and <clears throat> number two is consistency and this and scalability. Um, VMware has over a hundred products with dedicated designers for each product. So the, as you can imagine, there's, there's just a lot of people that we have to make sure to know, know about educated on accessibility, but also provide some guidelines to provide consistency um, and easy something easy to share um, with different product teams. Um, number three, accessibility uh, was considered, often considered at the end of the product was released, which is costly to fix after the fact. Um, you know, just the alone redesigning and 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 having developers uh, redevelop recode a lot of uh, issues just is it's very timely and costly. Um, and number four, we have uh, with SSS criteria standards. Uh, they're they're really they're re written really technical. They're not written for designers. Um, there's a lot of guidelines. Um, not all of them always apply to the product. Um, it's, it's hard to understand, um, even even for those who are already highly technical. Um, and and last one, at least, we wanted to practice more inclusion. We, we wanted to make sure people are aware of uh, what incess digital accessibility um, entails um, when we're talking about inclusion internally, internally with our employees, and and of course to towards our customers. And so what, what is included in this checklist? Um, so the, the checklist has a, a list of very common design concepts that, uh, that are related to accessibility and, and we provide guidelines um, on, to designers uh, how, for each one. So, how, so for example, um, it mentions colors, images, uh, links, buttons, forms. Uh, multimedia like that those are the very common types of design concepts and, and we provide guidelines on what designers should do for those um it has uh it it includes all the 
um, basic uh, WCAG level A and double A criteria guidelines uh, written more targeted towards designers. Um, we have internal Figma example library to, to supplement the design checklist items. Um, and we also have other resources linked in the design checklist. So there's tools, um, links to external articles and internal articles. Uh, we have uh, office hours uh, sign up to provide it. So designers and developers can, add, could join and then ask questions. We also have Slack channels that we monitor as well to uh, answer quick questions. And some, some items I wanna also note that aren't included in the design checklist we have, or we don't have highly technical language. We don't have any code solutions. We do have a developer checklist for this. Uh, uh, we don't have, this is not meant, we don't have, this is not meant to be replaced by formal training. Um, so there's, there, train, do we have training courses uh, separately? Um, so this is not replace, replace any formal, full, complete accessibility training. This is more like a cheat sheet or a quick reference guide. So it's just one of many resources we have at VMware. Um, and it does not have WCAG level A success criteria guidelines. Uh, this is uh, the highest and most strictest uh, standards that are often, uh, uh, you could think of these as above and beyond guidelines that um, most companies won't uh, necessarily follow. It's just up to the double A compliance. And we also won't um, provide uh, guidelines for very complex or uncommon design considerations. We, we direct our designers to office hours and Slack channels to answer these such questions. <clears throat> and on the checklist, uh, on the screen here, I have um, 13 items and th these are the actual checklist items we pr provide under each section on the, on the checklist. We provide description, um, some guidance and also examples for each. Uh, so just to um, verbally kind of list them out, um, we have uh, text color and non-text color contrast, use of color, text alternative for images, link and button text, skip links, headings, magnification, responsiveness, <clears throat> keyboard focus indication, keyboard focus order, page title, um, also known as a browser, browser tab title, uh, forms, notifications, and multimedia. Uh, just to give everyone kind of a taste of how uh, one of some of these checklist items look like. Um, you could, here's an example on, on the focus order we have. So under the focus order, um, it's just a brief description on the left side of the screen, uh, um, taken directly from the checklist. And on the right side is uh, a screenshot of a Figma example. So on the left side, basically it, it states that um, what it is, so keyboard, it's, Keyboard only users use the tab, shift tab, and sometimes arrow keys to navigate through interactive content, um, such as button links, forms, uh, page tabs. Uh, typically, it's the orders from top to bottom, left to right. Uh, the keyboard user flow should be indicated clearly so developers know how to order this in the code. Uh, so we, we um, mentioned that designers should visually show the flow the focus order, we could use number markers or, or flow line, um, it's up to them. Uh, we have a link to uh, the focus order figure example, um, as well as uh, more um, guidance on how to navigate with a keyboard on our internal keyboard 101 page. Um, and then on the right, it's just a screenshot of uh, just the compact view of, of how you could, as a designer, annotate the focus order of a website. So this is a really uh, high level example. Um, there's on the Figma example itself, there's more um, directions and, and instructions and annotations, but just to briefly uh, mention uh, how this screenshot looks like, uh, it has, uh, 
um, magenta outlines. Um, some of them outlines are solid and others are dotted. The solid ones indicate uh, when you press tab, it's, it's gaining focus on the elements. Um, dotted outlines is um, meant to imply that uh, everything within that container uh, that is interactive receives focus. So designers don't have to number every single uh, control on that section. So you know, starting from top, number one is the uh, address bar, and then number two and three are the skip to main content, skip to vertical navigation uh, links. And these, uh, we have annotation indicating if you if a user uh, activates those links, they move, focus will, where focus will move to. So if you activate number two, the skip to main content link, it'll go to uh, the, the main content area. If you activate the number three, the skip to vertical navigation, it'll jump to the navigation area. Um, and then number four would be all the containers or all the um, links and buttons within the header. Uh, will receive tab focus and then number and then we'll go number five and so on and so forth. Um, so this is just a suggested way. We have instructions again um, on the Figma uh, file itself. Uh, so this is just this is more one of the more complex um, checklist items. So just to show you how detail oriented this could be. Uh, and another example uh, we have is the page title. And, and on the left side, um, uh, we describe what it is, um, uh, some guidelines. Um, and on the right side, we have a screenshot of, uh, of accessibility uh, browser tab. So just, just um, quickly mention uh, page titles uh, is basically the text that appears on the browser tab. Um, this helps uh, sighted users see the purpose of the page, especially it's important for magnification users since they might have a lot of tabs open and they don't, and scrolling can be pretty difficult to get into the uh, main content. So it's it's definitely helpful to see the page title and helps the helps blind screen, screen reader users hear the purpose of the page um, <clears throat> as well. Um, and all, you know, we, we mentioned that all page uh, titles must be unique and descriptive, uh, and it should reflect the current purpose or topic of the page. Um, the recommended structure is the name of the page, uh, the subdomain if applicable, and the site name. So uh, in this example, we're using uh, accessibility. The, the Wikipedia accessibility page of the of Wikipedia. So the page title for that page would be accessibility dash Wikipedia. Um, as I mentioned, the screenshot shows uh, this for um, a designer so they could see a visual example. Um, <clears throat> and some some we had some really great outcomes um, after about a year or so uh, since. Uh, We've socialized this uh, design checklist. Um, it's been a really great conversation starter. Designers uh, new to or experienced with accessibility can uh, talk to you know talk to each other um, and developers and managers more easily, and everyone's more on the same page. And it kind of removes doubt, and it and it's easier to, for them to uh, talk with us, the accessibility team, uh, about these topics and as, as well as kind of learn more and and about each each topic um, under the checklist. Um, and it, it provides a lot of consistency and scalability. So it's like I mentioned earlier, we have over 100 products and it just it makes it a lot easier to share uh, this checklist for designers um, making uh, making and designing uh, products to become more uh, consistently accessible and usable. Uh, and there's, <clears throat> and it's it's also been this been used to be a, a style guide blueprint. So a lot of designers have incorporate um, the checklist items into their style guides so that 
it's more catered to uh, their product. Um, and of course, it, it saves a lot of time and money. Uh, baking accessibility in the design process means fewer accessibility issues uh, identified during uh, the testing and remediation phases of the product. So developers have, have less things to uh, fix at the end. Um, and of course, it, it generates more business. Uh, the more accessible the product, the more attractive our products will be to more customers and cultivates more inclusion for, uh, for employees internally. And of course, it reduces uh, loss of sales due to lack of accessibility. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for everyone joining this call, uh, this call today. Uh, hopefully uh, you learned some things about accessibility and, and, and consider accessibility earlier in your uh, design process uh, within your products. Um, we can open the floor to questions. Um, <clears throat> Randy, do we have any questions in the chat? I think I see any. Oh, I think there's a question. Um, so Deanna asks, uh, what resources are similar to DQ systems? Um, so DQ has their own uh, checklist. I, I believe it. they have, theirs are, are pretty similar. They follow uh, the same thing, the WCAG, uh, guidelines. Um, I believe they have a uh, paid university, which also has their own checklists or more detailed checklists, but I think they do have public ones. Uh, but the, yeah, this is, this is, you know, very similar, but this is catered to more within uh, VMware as well, uh, based on our feedback from product teams and designers as um, contribute to our products uh, checklist as well, so. Any, any other questions? Well, thank you for that presentation. Does anybody else have any more questions before we go? Checklists are always great ways to make sure you hit all the important parts. Yep, exactly. <laughs> I think we're good. We've got a quiet audience trying to take it all in. <laughs> uh, well, thank you very much, Amy. Nice to meet you. And I'll see you all at uh, you know the next upcoming session, if you want, uh, later in the day. All righty. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.